The Scarab God versus Azusa, Lost But Seeking. We've got a decent hand, minus that Grizzlebrand, so... Maybe we can go for a reanimation with Demonic Tutor. Actually, it might just be worth going for Blood Ghast because we've got Skull Clamp in hand. Just a case of counting down how long it takes for Azusa to get some Eldrazi out, I think. Uh, we can have the Sunken Hollow come in untapped, actually, so let's play the Skull Clamp and hope that that doesn't get removed because we're going to have to play a fast game here. We'll tutor for Blood Gas with Demonic Tutor, play it on turn three and equip it up, hopefully. So let's drop the Swamp and we'll go for that line of play. We've drawn two big creatures in a row. Luckily, we haven't seen any fast ramp from our opponent yet either, which is typically what you do see in Azusa. She comes down and drops just one land. Ah, oh, yeah, that's really good. Just one land from our opponent. Now we get into Animate Dead. We'll play the Blood Guest and equip it, as we said we were going to. And then Blood Guest will come out again next turn, and we'll be able to re-equip that. Careful study is really good. We can get rid of... Both of our demons, I think. And then reanimate one of them next turn. A card from our opponent. Reveal the top two cards, and we give one of them to our opponent. They can have a Skittering Surveyor. Then they can take Mana Crypt out of exile next turn if they want to. Azusa comes swinging in at us, as you would expect. All right, we get a tutor there. Let's drop the Marsh Flats. We can get more landfall off of that than we can with a normal land. Uh, then let's clamp the Blood Guest to draw more cards. Okay, Recurring Nightmare is really nice as well. So let's go Careful Study. We'll draw some cards. We have to discard two. We'll get rid of Rune Scarred Demon and Grizzlebrand. Then we will crack the Marsh Flats and get a land into play. Just the Underground Sea. That will trigger the Blood Ghast again. Not going to clamp it this time though. That can just set us up for next turn. Let's go for Animate Dead onto the Grizzlebrand here. Because apparently we're not drawing enough cards. And then we will leave it at that. Not going to pay the life just yet. We'll see what our opponent does first. Alright, they're using Khan to go after the Mana Crypt, because they're not drawing into their lands. Which is not something you often see with Azusa. She's normally got around 45 lands in the deck. Vivian Reed. Destroy a target artifact enchantment or creature with flying, so that can get rid of Grizzlebrand. Not before we draw a bunch of cards, though. And then we've got Recurring Nightmare in hand anyway. Grizzlebrand has already done the damage as soon as he hits play. We'll pay 7 life here to draw some cards. And then we will allow our opponent to destroy that. Then our opponent decided to go for a Mana Dork as well. That somewhat switches off the Plague Crafter. And then deciding not to swing in. Our Blood Ghast actually can't block that, but they decided not to swing in anyway. We draw into a Training Grounds, which is good if we decide to go for our commander. Let's play Sunken Hollow. Go for Skull Clamp. Then we'll play the Recurring Nightmare. And we'll grab a Rune Scarred Demon this time round. Sacrifice the Blood Ghast in order to get Rune Scarred Demon back. And then I think some kind of haste is in order here. So let's go for Lightning Greaves. Not going to be able to hold up Counter Magic, unfortunately. Uh, so let's... What do we want here? Let's just Clamp before we go for Lightning Greaves. Just in case Rune Scarred Demon leaves play. Then we'll go for the Greaves and we'll get rid of Vivian Reed. So that she can't destroy any more of our stuff. And then it is a case of us discarding some things here. Let's get rid of some reanimation targets, first of all. Then a couple of lands. And are we going to make use of training grounds or not? I don't think we are this game, so let's get rid of training grounds as well. 
And Etherflux Reservoir, yeah, we are really going to have to play fast against Etherflux Reservoir if we don't want to lose to that. I'm sure our opponent will have some kind of combination of cards that they can make use of Etherflux Reservoir with. Our opponent ripping a couple of lands off the top there in Cryptic Caves and the Forest. We will put a Forest into our opponent's hand and they can get Thrashing Brontodon next turn if we allow it. Might just swing in at Khan because they are getting some card advantage from that. They play the Forest immediately from hand. A Chroma's Memorials on top as well which gives our opponent's creatures protection from black and red as well as a bunch of other stuff that is not something that we want to be dealing with so we'll have to hold up mana drain for that let's play a land say yes to blood gas coming back out and then we'll go recurring nightmare i would like to bring back grizzlebrand here for the life gain so we'll point that at grizzlebrand sacrifice the blood ghast and then we'll move the Greaves over onto the Grizzlebrand. And then I think we're okay to just swing in here. Let's get rid of the Khan and point some damage at our opponent's head as well. And then I think it's just a case of holding up the Mana Drain. There's no need for us to do much of anything else. Sacrificing the Cryptic Caves to draw a card. What is that? Sacrifice it, draw a card. Only if you control five or more lands. That's a very good ability. I've never seen that land before. Also, a Sword of Feast and Famine on top as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's tricky. We need to counter either of those spells. I don't think they can do both in one turn, which is good. Hopefully we can build up enough of a board state to go wide. A Chroma's Memorial is the main target to counter because it gives all of our opponent's creatures protection from black, whereas Sword of Feast and Famine only gives them protection from black on one of their creatures. And actually the sword forces us to discard, which isn't the worst thing for us, with us being a reanimator deck. Going for the Aether Flux Reservoir, gaining a life, that is Grove from the Ashes. And that has been kicked. They're going to shuffle their library up here. See if they manage to hit a chunk of lands off the top again. Revealing a Guardian Project. That's not the worst thing for them to get into. They get some lands into play, which will gain them life with Corsa of Crufix. And then going for that Sword of Feast and Famine. They can't afford a Chroma's Memorial now, so we'll just counter that. We can go for Snap Mage next turn when they decide to play their Chroma's Memorial. Then going for Skittering Surveyor, gaining even more life. Luckily we've got some big flyers in the air where we can deal with all this life gain. I don't actually know what that does, Skittering Surveyor. Uh, search your library for a basic, put it into your hand. And that land came off the top, they've got another one on top, and then we know they've got one in hand from the Skittering Surveyor, so their so they're slight mana screw at the beginning of the game is no more. Let's just take three here. And then at the end of the turn, we'll go for a Brainstorm. All right, Force of Will is good to get into. I don't think we need Mesmeric Orb at this point. So let's throw that on top. And the Play Crafter as well. And then we might as well go for Entomb to shuffle our library. Because we don't want to draw into those two cards again. And let's grab ourselves a Massacre Worm here. And our opponent decides to scoop, that's a shame. Uh, we were going to wipe their board anyway. Massacre Worm goes into the bin. And then let's see if it would have shown us what we would have drawn. It will not. But yeah, we would have drawn in... Oh yes, it will. Playcrafter. Oh yeah, it hasn't shuffled yet, has it? So that's why Playcrafter is on top. Um, yeah, so Massacre Worm. We reanimate with Phyrexian Delver and lose 6 life but it gets rid of our opponent's board. Then we swing in at them for... Uh, we'd leave Phyrexian Delver back. That is six. Uh, 20 points of damage with all three creatures, as I work it out. And we would gain seven again from the Grizzle Brand. I don't think we'd draw any more cards unless we were desperate to. And I think we could have still afforded 
yeah, with the land drop, we still could have gone for Snapcaster Mage into the uh, Mana Drain to counter the Acroma's Memorial. And failing that, we could have drawn cards with Grizzlebrand, like I said, and gone for Force of Will. I'm assuming in the top seven there was a blue card in there somewhere. But that was actually a more interactive game than I usually have with the Scarab God deck, so I'm pleased about that. And it's actually a more interactive game than you'll usually get against Azusa as well. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching. <laughs>